Hi there, leaders. This is week 10 with Mrs. Brown. Our topic this week is here, there, everywhere, active listening. And pay close attention. I didn't spell here wrong in this um, unit. It is actually here because we're going to be talking about using your ears. An important aspect of being an effective communicator involves how well you can listen. Although being a good listener is a necessary leadership skill, people often overlook its significance. For example, you may hear someone in a group you're leading present information to you, but because you aren't actively engaged in what's being said, you aren't really listening and don't realize what the other person is saying. While some people use the words hearing and listening interchangeably, being an active listener takes practice and awareness of what can block versus what can improve communication, and we're going to talk about those blocks today. Let's go ahead and take a look at our couple of quotes. The first one is, years ago, I tried to top everybody, but I don't anymore. I realized it was killing conversation. When you're always trying for a topper, you aren't really listening. It ruins communication. This is by Groucho Marx. The next one is from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Arthur's character says, it's at times like this I wish I'd listened to my mother. Ford says, why? What did she say? Arthur says, I don't know, I never listened. So very true, I do that all the time with my own mother. In Blackboard, I have provided for you a few videos about my favorite character, Penelope, from Saturday Night Live. Um, it's quite hysterical, and I hope you enjoy it, but there is a significance to why I'm sharing this type of uh, video with you. I want you to think about this question. Is Penelope an active listener? Well, here's my opinion. You might rush to say no if you know anything about Pe Penelope. However, my opinion is she's a very active listener because she has to hear about what the person said so she can top them. What are your thoughts? Do you know a Penelope? Penelope? Are you a Penelope? In my experience, I was somewhat like Penelope as a young child, but now that I'm older, not so much anymore. I pay close attention to who is speaking by watching their lips and not becoming distracted by other things. However, I could argue this, this question by what we're going to talk about next, which is listening blocks. So think about that as we talk about Penelope. As I mentioned before, active listening takes practice. It's not something that you're born with. You actually have to practice this. Yes, you are born with ears. Yes, you are born with the ability to hear, but that doesn't automatically make you a good listener because there are what's called listening blocks. Here, think about this. What's the first thing you notice when somebody talks to you? How often do you hear someone speak, but then realize you're not sure what the person just said? If you are doing something other than focusing on what someone is saying, for example, silently thinking about something else, you create blocks that interfere with effective or active listening. The following listening blocks will explain to you um, and may appear to be listening, but in fact, you are actually doing something else that prevents you from taking in what the person is saying. Let's go ahead and take a look and read these descriptions together. The first one is rehearsing. If while someone is talking, you are busy, busy silently rehearsing or planning a reply, it's harder to concentrate on what the person actually is saying. Judging. If you're focused on how a person is dressed, looks, or talks, you may prejudge the person and dismiss the idea he or she is describing as unimportant or uninformed. Identifying. If you're occupied thinking about your own experience and launch into a story before the person even finishes telling his or her story, you may lose sight of what the other person was trying to communicate. Advising. If you're intent on offering just the right advice for someone's problems before the person is done talking, you might not fully understand the individual situation. Sparing. If you're focused on disagreeing with what someone else is saying, you're probably not giving the other person a chance to express him or herself. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few more. Put downs. If you're using sarcastic comments to put down another person's point of view, you could draw the other person into an argumentative conversation in which no one hears anything. Being right. If you're intent on proving your point or not admitting any wrongdoing, you may end up twisting the facts, shouting, making excuses, or even arguing with the opposite of what you initially said. This may confuse and upset both of you and the other person. Derailing. If you suddenly change the subject or joke about what is being said, you're likely to weaken a speaker's trust in you and your ability to show understanding. Smoothing over. If you dislike conflict or want others to like you, you may appear to be supportive but not really fully engaged in the conversation. And last but not least is daydreaming. If you tune out while someone's talking, drifting about in your own fantasies and thoughts, you're not likely to hear a word the other person says. 
And the question down here I have is, can this happen in nonverbal communication too? We talked about nonverbal last week, so let's kind of think about those nonverbal cues that we can get across, our facial expressions, eye contact, that type of thing. When you focus on what others are saying, you can be a more effective and active listener. With active listening, you can encourage a speaker to say more and reinforce your relationship with her or him. Let a speaker know what you are hearing and, if necessary, ask questions when you don't understand something. You can dig deeper for information from the speaker because you are paying complete attention to the conversation and want to understand more about what's going on. You can demonstrate your respect for a speaker by acknowledging and addressing his or her feelings so emotion doesn't become an obstacle. And last but not least, you can guide a speaker to organize and express his or th her thoughts clearly. So my assignment to you is, can you hear me now? Good. Hmm. Just like the Verizon guide. Your assignment is, typically I want you to do the assignment, but in this case, I would like you to kind of take a back step role and observe your own behavior. So I want you to keep the listening blocks in mind. You're going to be doing an interview with a family member using the worksheet of questions that I will provide for you in Blackboard. Then at the end, I would like you to write about any listening blocks you might have experienced and state what happened and how you got back to active listening. Then write yourself. After you are done, please email the assignment to Mrs. Brown. And of course, if you have any questions, please let me know. I think that is it for this week. Give me a call or email if you need anything. Talk to you later. Hope you have a good one.